Hello, my name is Kevin Day. This presentation is on Return Oriented Programming, or ROP. This presentation was part of my Vulnerability, Discovery, and Exploitation course at Metropolitan State University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Disclaimer: This video presentation has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. Return-oriented programming is a computer security exploit technique that allows an attacker to execute code by manipulating return addresses in the call stack despite the presence of security defenses. This exploit reuses code already in a process based on return to libc exploit technique and is used to bypass data execution prevention. This exploit was first published in 1997, which focused on abusing the libc library, which is present in most compiled C programs. Some background to understanding this exploit. Each process inside a computer requires memory space to store data. For a typical C program, memory is divided into address space, which is logically consisting of five segments. The text segment, the data segment, the BSS segment, the heap, and the stack. The text segment stores the mach machine address that forms the executable code of the program which the CPU will execute. This block of memory is usually read-only, and the text segment is normally read-only. The data segment contains any static or global variables which have a predefined value by the developer and can be modified. These values variables are not defined within a function, but are defined as static to retain their address across subsequent function calls. The block started by symbol, or BSS segment, stores the unutilized static and global variables filled with zeros by the OS. Thus, all the unutilized variables are initialized with zero. The heap is used to provide space for allocating and eliminating dynamic memory during program execution and user-defined memory management. The stack keeps track of where it is in the function call chain as well as storage for local variables defined inside the stack and data related to functions such as local variables and parameters. The stack is used for storing data used in function invocations, which are organized in order which they were added. Additions to the stack can only be made on top of the stack in a last-in, first-out behavior. The behavior of the stack is defined by push, which adds data, pop, which takes data out, determining the size of the stack, and also peak, which looks at the topmost element in the stack. A stack which is found inside an operating system is invo invoked whenever a program executes a series of function and memory that is allocated for the process on the stack to execute for the execution of the function. Areas of memory that are allocated by the OS in the stack are for local variables, parameters for functions, control flow. Memory addresses determine the address of the stack frame. The two process registers, the stack pointer and the base pointer, are used to track the record of memory addresses. The stack always grows from the top to bottom. Thus, the stack pointer will always be less than or equal to the base pointer. The stack frame when a software application is executed in a callable unit such as a function or subroutine, a stack, stack frame is invoked and executed by the CPU and space is allocated in memory. A stack frame is produced when a function is invoked and pushes on top of the stack, but is not executed. Every stack frame corresponds to an invocation of a callable unit which has not been terminated with a return statement. The stack frame 
has four main parts which are assigned locations in memory. The local variables, the call, saved registers, the parameters, and the return address. Call stacks are essential to the operations of many computer systems. They are used to complete tasks that require multiple steps to be performed and completed. This is a dynamic data maintain structure maintained inside the memory management unit of a computer system. Controlling the ways callable units call and pass data and pa call and pass parameters to each other. The call stack can contain multiple stack frames which are dependent on the callable unit and the memory of the system. The return address is used to return to and execute the preceding callable unit. When a callable unit invokes another callable unit, variables are pushed onto the stack in a single stack frame. When a callable unit associated with the stack frame at the top of the call stack has been fully executed, the stack frame is eliminated and is popped off the call stack. An attacker can gain control of the call stack in efforts to hijack a program's control flow, which allows for the execution of carefully chosen mach machine instruction sequences that are present in the machine's memory. Obtaining control of the call stack allows an external control of existing trusted software running on the computer and can be manipulated by attackers to suit their own needs. The x86 architecture. The x86 architecture is an important instruction set architecture series for the computer processors developed by the Intel Corporation. The x86 architecture defines how a process handles and executes different instructions passed from the operating system and software applications. There are many different instructions and random bytes which are likely to be interpreted as valid sequences of instructions. An attacker can search through a software binary file and look for specific machine code instructions and perform a useful function such as the return instruction and then backtrace to see if the preceding bytes form a valid instruction that can be used. The term libc is a commonly used as a shorthand for the, san the standard C library, which is a library of standard functions that can be used by all C programs. The structure of the libc library is well known and individuals can identify the memory address from every subroutine and craft a call stack buffer overflow that does not corrupt the call stack, but simply re replaces the memory pointer with one that will invoke a libc subroutine. The, typical, the type of exploit the standard libraries was made much harder with the introduction of the address space layout randomization in 2002. The address space layout randomization randomizes the location of allocated memory and libraries each time a process is run. Loading shared libraries into a different memory location at each program loaded. Thus, an attacker cannot simply accurately predict the location of instruction to inject onto the call stack to abuse the software library with gadgets and cannot mount an successful ROP attack chain. Address space layout randomization is vulnerable to a data leak and other approaches to determine the address of known library functions in memory. Data execution prevention. User supplied information should never be executed. Code injects attacks can no longer work if the bytes supplied cannot be executed as legitimate code. Modern CPUs have a feature called no execute or NX bit. This is useful to distinguish between data and text segments. 
Many operating systems try to ensure that data segments are writable but not executable, and text segments are not writable but are executable. If a buffer is overrun in a DEP aware system, it would be able to determine that the instruction pointer to the CPU is pointed to a user supplied data section of memory and consequently terminate execution. The most basic implement implementation of making memory pages are a combination of readable, writable, and executable. This ensures that the pages that store user input are never marked as executable, thus preventing the execution of code in memory spaces in which should contain data on the call stack. In this section, we'll start going into ROP exploits. Stack-based buffer overflows can happen on both the stack and the heap. This exploit happens when a program is writes to a memory address on the program call stack outside of the intended data structure, such as a fixed length buffer. ROP was built to overcome the shortcomings of the buffer overflow in which an attacker can insert arbitrary code and attack in a stack segment and execute it. Address space layout randomization prevents ROP by making the stack segment non-executable. The introduction of A of the address space layout randomization has been made more difficult to for the injections of malicious code. On a Windows system, there is many API functions that make ROP exploits are very possible. All of these, most of these functions are from the memory API.h library to pay to bypass depth. These functions are the virtual protection function, which changes the protection of a region of a commit committed pages in the virtual ad address space of a the calling process. Virtual allocation, which reserve commits or changes the state of a region of a page in the virtual address space of the calling process, and the write process memory which writes data to an area of memory in a specific specified process. You can learn more about these different uh, functions in the memory API visiting the Windows API documentation. Gadgets are short sequences of instructions already made present in a program's address space that terminate with a return instruction. Each gadget typically has an extremely limited function that ends in a return instruction and is in a subroutine with the existed program and or share library code. When the return pointer of a function is overwritten with a ROP chain, the process will step through each gadget's code before returning to the next gadget in the chain. The return instruction will pop the return address of the stack and continue to execute there. An attacker will need to gather these gadgets from an existing binary. We see here there's three gadgets chained together. We see the pop, the two pop instructions, and an add. Um, these set to registration processes then perform an arithmetic addition. A ROP, train, a ROP chain builds on borrowing code segments and executes it to a provided complete function functionality to the attacker using loops and conditional statements. Rather than the return to entry point of a library function, an attacker can return to any instruction in a text segment. The scheme of ROP is to look for small sequences of useful code that end with a return instruction. An attacker can string together these sequences by using the return address placed on the stack. 
Once the ASLR has been bypassed, it is possible by determining the load address of the desired module and generating proper addresses for the whole ROP train. In this section, uh, I'll be going into a couple different defenses that prevent the ROP exploits. The concept of a stack canary comes from the idea for when miners brought canaries into mines as an early warning system to detect when toxic gases would build inside the mine. A computer would use this concept of a digital canary as a technique to detect buffer overflows before the injected code in an invoke is invoked by adding by adding with a specific value to the stack frame before the current function's return pointer by placing a small randomized integer value at the specific point on the call stack which acts as a potential safeguard. If the stack is overwritten with this value, it will change allowing the program to self-terminate safely. Upon a return from the function, the compiler will insert code to check the value of the canary. If the preceding buffer is overrun to, re to the replace the pointer, then the canary will also be overwritten. Compiler modules can detect this change in the canary and terminate the process before the function returns, thus preventing the malicious code execution. Bypassing stack canaries require the replacement of the canary before the return check, adding a function not protecting by a canary, or using a non-overflow based exploit. G-free is a well-known solution against any form of ROP. This eliminates all unaligned free branch instructions inside a binary executable and protects the free branch instruction from being used by an attacker, such as a return or a call instruction. The way G-free protects the return address is like XOR the XOR operation implemented by the stack guard. It checks the authentication of a function call by appending a validation block if the expected result is not found. G-free causes the, a the application to crash. Systems on a chip. Systems on a chip is a software adaptation when paired with a supplemented hardware can detect and mitigate a ROP attack in process. This works by chronologically logging return address addresses to return commands executed by the CPU. This would monitor current CPU executions if the return command deviates from the logged return address the system on a chip determines that a ROP is in progress. This would then take actions to stop the ROP attack in progress in two distinct ways, a non-posted or posted wait. Non-posted wait allow the software on a chip to immediately check every return command against logged return addresses and stop a ROP attack immediately. Posted wait has a slight delay in checking a return command against the logged return addresses, allowing the ROP attack to begin that does not allow for completion of the active ROP attack. Non-posted wait can cause latency issues and posted wait can allow some gadgets to be executed, but both prevent sex successful ROP attacks. These are the references which I used for this presentation. Thank you and I hope you enjoy this.